Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ken, and this is my deuce and a half. I haven't told y'all about the time my brakes failed going down a mountain, but it happened. As you can see, I survived, but that was the exact moment when I took fix emergency brakes off my to-do list and actually did it. In this video, you'll see how I installed my rebuilt brake handle and a new cable, made five different adjustments, and ended up with something that would actually stop my M35A2. Let's get started. The parking brake on a deuce and a half clamps a drum that is just behind the transmission from the inside and outside, operated by a single lever which is pulled by a cable that comes from the cab. Basically, it's a brake on the drive shaft instead of at the wheels. The outer parking brake pad pivots on a bolt at the bottom. The first adjustment is to eliminate as much side-to-side -side play in the pad as possible while still letting it pivot freely. First, I loosen the lock nut using an inch and a half socket. Then using a 33 millimeter socket, I tighten the pivot bolt until I was happy with the amount of play. To my surprise, after I put the lock nut back on, the pad would no longer move at all, so I had to back the bolt off just a little bit. It took a few iterations until the pad was correctly adjusted with the lock nut tight. The second adjustment is the gap from the outer brake pad to the drum. The brake lever is in the way when it is down, so I reinstalled the spring that pulls it up between a cotter pin on the lever and a tab attached to the frame. A short, stout spring holds the pad up against the adjustment bolt. My original spring was broken, so I replaced it. The key to installing it was to hook the spring around the bolt first, then push the other end of the spring through the pad. Needle nose vice grips clamped to the lower end of the spring made it possible. With the spring pulling the pad up, the adjustment bolt is turned counterclockwise to push the pad closer to the drum. Per the technical manual, or TM for short, the clearance should be 15 thousandths of an inch. Using the 15 thousandths blade of a feeler gauge, I discovered that not only was the gap different at each end, it was different from one side of the pad to the other. I used the single adjustment bolt to bring the pad in as close as possible while leaving at least 10 thousandths clearance everywhere. Then I put a lock nut on the end of the bolt. The third adjustment is to the inside brake pad. There's a screw with a lock nut that adjusts the pad. The TM makes it sound like this screw can be used to set 15 thousandths clearance, but I found it useful only to even up the gap at both ends of the pad. Using the lever, you can bring the pad close to the drum and then turn the screw to even up the gap. Once you're satisfied, tighten up the lock nut. The 15 thousandths clearance is set later when adjusting the cable. Next, it was time to connect the new cable to the brake handle. Here's the new cable side by side with the old cable. There are differences, but none that matter. I started by securing the cable to the black bracket that mounts underneath the cab. There's a two-piece clamp that goes around the cable. Both pieces have a raised bump that fits in a groove on the cable to hold it securely. The two-piece clamp was fastened to the black bracket using two 5 16 inch bolts. Attaching the black bracket to the cab was next. Just to make sure the JB welded bolts on the bracket would fit, I sat the bracket down in the holes from the top side and it slid into position easily. Sliding the bracket into position from the bottom side was a little bit harder, but if you help the cable up through the floor from the top side, it's not too bad. A single nut on the bolt to the top right on your screen was enough to hold the bracket in place until the handle assembly was secured. Then it was time to attach the cable to the parking brake handle assembly. First, I put a little grease on the brand new pin, then pushed it through both the end of the cable and the bar that pulls it from left to right on your screen. With it all the way through, I put a thick, small diameter washer onto the pin, then stuck a cotter key through the end of the pin. Two needle nose pliers helped me spread the cotter key's pins. Four bolts attach the handle to the floor. Three of them are part of the black underfloor bracket. The fourth one was tricky to install. I completely detached the black bracket to give me as much room as possible, then held the bolt with needle nose pliers to push it up through the floor. The next time I do this job, I will loosely install the two handle assembly brackets first, starting with this bolt, and later attach the handle to the two brackets. That will be easier than the sequence in the TM. With a lock washer and nut on the single loose bolt, 
I pushed the black bracket back into place, then put lock washers and nuts on its four bolts before tightening all five nuts. Tightening the single loose bolt required holding a wrench on it from the bottom while tightening the nut from the top. It's not easy, but one guy can do it. With the floor bolts tight, I completed installing the handle by tightening the nuts on the two cross bolts that secure the handle to the two floor brackets. Then it was time for the fourth adjustment, which is using the twist knob on the handle to move the pin attached to the cable. My first thought was to have the pin all the way down to leave as much room for future tightening as possible. But it turns out that the handle will not fold all the way down unless the pin is at least halfway up, so that's where I set it. It still leaves a lot of room to tighten the cable without having to crawl under the truck. To route the cable from the cab to the brake lever, it needs to pass through the frame. The cable protector can then be installed. This is one of those little bits of old technology that I just, I love it because it shows that people back in the day were smart. It hooks through the frame like that. You just bolt the two pieces together and then you have basically a little protective tunnel that will keep the, the cable from getting chewed up as it goes through. It's very easy to install. Here's our completed protector as the cable passes through the frame. As you can see, it can't come out. At the brake drum, I passed the end of the cable through the hole in the lever. Next, I secured the cable by installing a bolt with a lock washer onto the cable retention bracket. On the metal end of the cable sleeve, there's a groove that the bolt sits in, locking the cable in place. Once the bolt was installed, I slid the rubber cable protector back onto the metal cable sleeve. The fifth and final adjustment was made using the nut on the end of the cable. The new threads allowed me to run the acorn nut all the way up against the lever by hand, continuing to tighten until the inside brake pad had 15 thousandths clearance to the drum. Once I had that, I went in the cab to see what the brake pull felt like. I wanted more resistance, so back underneath the truck, I tightened the acorn nut a little more. So, final adjustment was done by feel, not by feeler gauge. When I had engaged and released the brake several times and was happy with the feel, I put a washer on and then a lock nut. The washer was there as a spacer. Without it, my wrench was too thick and it interfered with the lock nut. I put the lock nut on tight and installation was almost complete. I still needed to make something to protect the cable from the edge of the fuel tank. I tested the emergency brake by yanking it while rolling down a hill, foot off the brake, and clutch pushed in. It stopped the truck. I was going to repeat that test on camera, but right now my deuce has a pretty bad leak from an injector return line. That will be a story for another time. Comments and questions are always welcome, and they help other viewers. Thank you for watching.